Welcome to the Sonoma County Library's basic book mending video series. Today we are going to be doing tears, both beveled and complex. So the supplies you're going to need for fixing these types of tears range from mending sheets, mending sticks, brushes, you're going to want to have a jar of clean water and a lid or surface to put glue on. Um, you're going to need some just straight clean water, um, Norbon liquid plastic, um, document repair tape, uh, shiny barcode protectors, um, small scissors, an X-Acto knife, your bone folder, and some type of a weight. So the goal is to repair and strengthen tears in a variety of paper stocks and types of paper from high glossy to uncoated while preserving the integrity of the text and or the artwork. So I'm going to give you an example of what not to do. Um, sadly, someone took a tape and placed it along here so the text isn't lined up. It's all crimped. The other side, you know, you can't even read that, those words there. So that is what you don't want to do. The important thing is lining it up. Now, a lot of times on the kids' books, especially the ones with the um, shiny pages, they have a tendency to rip and tear. Uh, usually when I'm repairing one of those, I just go through like that has a tear in it. And there's several others through here. So you might want to just go through those pages and fix any of those little tears. So we're, first thing we're going to do is what's called a beveled tear. Um, and pretty much there's no other kind of tear except a beveled tear and a complex tear. A beveled tear is characterized that way because there's usually one side that's flatter than the other. In this case, I don't know if you can see, but along here it's flat. So it's peeled off of that side. So with beveled tears, the most important thing is lining up all the little fractures so that, see here with the word church, that needs to be flipped to the other side. So what you want to do is you want to assess your tear first and you want to line it up as best you can. And sometimes it just takes a little And once you have it all lined up, so everything, all the little fat pr fractures, it's kind of like a puzzle piece. And then I want to make sure it's the same way on the other side. And it lines up nicely. Okay, great. So it can be lined up so I don't have to worry about fixing any other things. Once you've figured out the side that you want to glue, you're going to take a, um, and you can use a mending stick rolled along the edge. You can use a chenille tip. You can use a small brush. It's all a matter of how best you work. For this, I'm going to use a small brush. So I'm going to put some glue in my lid. I'm going to make sure my brush is wet because the nice thing about the Norbon plastic of adhesive is it works well with water. So I take a little bit of this and I just brush it and I try to brush it away from the fibers and I just basically go all along the edge. A little too much there, but I want to make sure I've got some all along 
the edge there. Now, some people believe in doing both sides, which is fine. You can do both sides. You always want to make sure you get the insertion point. Once you get good at this, you probably only need to do one side. But to start, always being careful to keep those little feathers, fractures, Okay, I want to make sure I keep water on that. I'm going to get myself a mending sheet. And now I'm going to work my starting from the top. Since I know this is the side, I'm going to work. all the little fractures into place. I'm going to place another sheet over this one. And then I'm going to gently use my bone folder to smooth it all, make sure the glue sticks. And then we're going to shut our book. Thank you very much. And we're going to leave it to dry and we'll come back to that one. Now for uh, tears, beveled tears that are complex. And what I mean by complex is that it has more than one component. Because uh, most tears, you know, will be in a somewhat straight line going out to the edge relatively easy to fix. Uh, but a complex tear has several different factors. You've got a tear here, a tear along here, and then a tear along to the edge. So we need to fix this in order. So once you have um, all of your puzzle pieces lined up and you know which way you're gonna go, you wanna make sure you have your mending sheet underneath. In this case, I'm going to start at the top here. Uh, this time I'm going to use a mending stick so you can see how that works. And basically I'm going to make sure I get some in there and then I'm just going to roll it along the fracture here. I'm going to roll some along here and just to where you see where it beads up. I'm going to stick a little extra here. So that's the first one we're going to fix. I'm going to have my paper at the ready. I'm going to line up. Okay, up to there. Okay, so that's our first mend on this particular complex tear. I'm gonna close up my book, make sure I got my weight on it, and we'll come back to that one as well. Okay. So sometimes the paper stock is way too thin or it's really old and brittle. In that case, glue is not going to be a good fix. So what we can use is a document repair tape. So let's pretend this book has really brittle pages and we're not going to glue it. So we're going to use document repair tape. So one of the things about document repair tape, as I've explained before, is once you get it started, and we're going to show you a little demo today on getting it started. Once you get it started, you never want to uh, lose, lose the start. You always want to leave a little bit of the paper out. Um, with tears and document tape, I don't ever cut it. 
I always tear it because it disappears more into the tear. And also, if you don't like using long pieces, you could do it in short. So this one is roughly a couple inches. So I'm going to do it in pieces to show you. So I'm going to tear off a piece. I'm going to line up my fractures. And always want to be about a half inch above where the inception is. I'm going to lay out my tape. I'm going to take the, my bone folder and burnish. And this is really important because there's adhesive on the document repair tape that needs to go into the tear. So you want to really gently but get firmly get it in there and like i said if you don't like working in big pieces you can use a series of little pieces it's all a matter of of your dexterity your comfort level so and now i'm going to extend this beyond making sure I've got everything lined up. And again, I'm going to gently burnish this right into that tear using firm but gentle pressure. Now there's two schools of thought on document repair tape and every library does it differently. Some recommend flipping it around so that you catch that other side and then some prefer trimming it to the edge um, i tend to be like to prefer to trim it to the edge but i will flip it over to show you the difference part of the reason why i like to trim it is i find that no matter how tight i try to flip it there's still a little edge that could be caught on. And that is just an Im another invitation for a little tear. So it's all a matter of your comfort. Me, if I was trimming it, I would lay the page down on a surface or put something behind it. I would use my X-Acto knife and just trim it right along the edge. Now, if the paper is super, super thin, and the tear is quite jagged, you can always do the other side, but you don't necessarily need to do so. Um, but for some people, they feel that it's stronger. It's assessing each book individually for the type of paper and uh, you know the type of tear. So we promised to demonstrate how to get your document repair tape started when you have a brand new box. So as you can see here, this one's already started and since I tear it, it's easy to find where it starts. I take a little piece off, I tear it. But now we're gonna show you what happens when you get that brand new box or you've blown it and cut a piece so here you go. So you could spend a long, a long time trying to find it is so thin. So you take two pieces of scotch tape and you put one on one end and one on the other end and you just peel up. There you go. So once you get it started, tear it, and now you're good to go. Hey, so now we're going to look at our first uh, glue job, and hopefully it's dry. So we're going to find our page and peel off our... Now, it's not quite dry because the glue, when it's completely dry, uh, 
is clear, completely clear. I could see a little bit in there. Now, once you've left it to dry for a long time, and I don't want to mess with it right now because it's not quite dry, um, you can test it, make sure it's a good solid. Sometimes, if need be, if you don't feel that where it comes out on the edge of the book, it hasn't, just doesn't quite feel right, you can put two pieces of document tape on either side and then again trim it to the edge. Or now that it's glued and we know that the feathers are all together, we can put on the verso, always on the back of the page, we can put a piece of document repair tape on any areas that don't look like they're fully and just make sure you burnish it in. So that's our beveled tear. We're gonna take a look at our uh, complex tear. Okay, again, I'm gonna gently peel up my paper. Okay, looking good. Still, again, not quite dry, but I think we could go ahead and apply our next part. So now that we've got that done, we're gonna go ahead and put some glue. And I'm gonna show you another little technique. I also like using a flat edged brush. You know, it all depends upon each of the types of tears. Because with a flat edged brush, I can really get in that groove there. And Make sure I get all my little feathers. This one I'm going to apply coat on each side. Again, always working away from my feathers. And I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but you can really see the little feathers. Okay. And again, I'm going to make sure I've got my, I'm going to use my finger to lightly. And this is where I'm going to make sure I really get where it meets the edge. Nice and tight there. Okay gonna let this one dry and then we'll come back to this one later and that will be it and we'll show you how it looks okay we're gonna take a look at our oh we love the Titans curse it's been so good to us during this series so this is the complex tear we're gonna take a look at it and I'm gonna not quite dry but I'm gonna gently peel this away anyway so you can get a look-see yeah, see, wasn't quite dry. So we took off the word. I adverted my eyes and don't know what it says. That's why you want to make sure it's dry. This side came out great, though. You can see where it's still drying a little bit, but it looks nice and strong. Don't even need to put any document repair tape. But definitely, please always let your gluings dry. I know you're excited like me. We want to see what they look like, but that you risk, especially when there's text.